myself. And I say, can you please run through the introduction with me? And they'll always say, well, you're Jane, you're from London, blah, blah, blah. And I'll always say, I think you have your facts wrong because I am Jillian, but I hail from the city of Calcutta or Kolkata. And then they say, can you spell that for me, please? And I'll say, certainly, it'll be a pleasure, but please get the introduction right. And while they talk about their little Sarah's or Tim's or Danny Young's and so on, I speak about my little emotionaries or my little sujatas or my little mohits or my little profulas. And I just long to get on stage to do that. And why do I do that? Because ladies and gentlemen, I read a book called Indian English. My father was captain in the British Army. And we grew up in India after India got her independence. This is my family, my parents, my sister Vanessa, myself, and Susan. When I was just four years old, we lost four siblings to malnutrition, poverty, dehydration, and starvation, basically. And then we came along and we lived behind people's houses under their stairs and basically finding any shelter that we could find. That's the book I've written, and basically under the stairs is really a picture of my mom, myself, and my little sister in her arms. And just about a few feet away, we lived on a sheet of plastic. This the place still stands today, where people wash their clothes, where they use that toilet, and so on and so forth. After some time, when my dad got better, so he was being treated for heart problems in Salvation Army. We moved to a proper slum in Kipo, where almost 3,000 people shared three toilets. We were all girls, and we grew up like that. There was no electricity, hardly any water. We had to fill water from the tube well buildings away. There was no money, and we faced some very grueling circumstances during those times. My fifth sibling was brought home and given again three days to live, but she survived. And I'm not going to go over with all those details today, but basically the doctor had given her up. But the men, man, can we move this like this? But these are the people who actually saved our lives, the poorest of the poor. And this is what I'd like to tell the whole world about, that these are the people around where we lived who saved our lives. The milkman on the left is the person who actually gave me a bowl of milk every single day had saved my sister's life. Today she's married an Australian boy and they've just given birth to a beautiful baby girl called Samantha. The vegetable woman used to keep her bad vegetables and we used to pick it up every night and that's how we cooked and that's how we ate. And of course the meat man and our little Modi and our little Pankara, as we used to call him, were just prize human beings. To me, ladies and gentlemen, I really and honestly think that these are the true legends. The people who actually save lives and free them. They literally have nothing to give. Nothing. If you really compare it to what some of us have, they have nothing to give, but they give it all. And, and you know, I have three study centers that I run today for kids, and we have five teens working across the city 24 hours a day, reaching out to children, to the youth, to the aged to women in need and to the disabled. And I can tell you that those people are legends too. All those students. And I say that because when I visit them, I see these people helping the people, helping the little ones, feeding them, inspiring them, caring for them. And yet, I'm the legend, <laughs> you know. Can we move this slide, please? But let me tell you, let me tell you, Princess Diana's brother actually put it very well at her funeral when he made a speech. And he said that she didn't need any award or title to generate or continue to generate her brand of magic. And neither do I. But I will tell you what I will take away from this, from this evening. When I sit alone among so many people, and when I'm fighting for my cause that I believe in, for my city and my country, 
I will remember this evening and I will know that somebody cares. Somebody cares for the work we do. Somebody thanked us. Somebody loves us. And thank you for coming today. That's what I want to tell you. And people like this, to me, are just truly amazing. So I will continue to go out there for two reasons. Number one, to continue to inspire people and to show them what I believe in, in the words of Maya Angelou, that I can be changed by my circumstances, but I refuse to be reduced by it. And secondly, that we can continue to also keep generating our own specific brand of magic. Thank you very much for your time.